My name is Ezra Konvitz. Uh, I'm one of the co-founders of ArtStack, which is, uh, we call it the social platform for art, <clears throat> among other things, I guess. And uh, I guess one of the interesting things is about the, the concept of archiving art online, and that's effectively what we're doing. So we've tried to, um, in some ways, follow the, um, the kind of traditional offline ways of looking at art and how you classify art, as well as take that online and make it easy to do online. So I'm going to walk you through a little bit of how that works and why we did it, um, as well as maybe a little bit of background about what ArtStack is as a project and where it came from. Uh, so starting at the beginning, I don't know how many of you know ArtStack, but um, essentially it's a social archive. It's living. It's, you know, as, as, um, as we've talked about already today, it's, it's a live archive. Uh, it's all user-generated content, so anybody can add work to the site. Uh, the concept is essentially it's a democratic open space, which is quite different from the kind of structures that traditionally have existed in the art world, which are usually closed, quite opaque, kind of intimidating, um, often require kind of access. Uh, so what we've done is we said, why is it so difficult to look at art online? Uh, why is it so, in particular, the kind of the initial question we really tried to solve was, how do I discover art? And one of the big problems uh, that exists, I think, be it online or offline, is that you can't uh, really find, for instance, if you were to Google, uh, show me cool art that I don't know, that I'm going to like, that wouldn't work, right? Um, and so that was kind of the, one of the fundamental things we were trying to do was say, okay, so how do I discover art in the real world? And usually that's because I talk to one of my friends or somebody I respect, and they tell me about something that's interesting to them. Or I go to their house, and they've got a work on the wall, or they've got a book, or they say, why don't we go to see this exhibition, or they sent me a postcard. So there are these different kind of ways that uh, people are introduced to art, but broadly speaking, it's usually social. Uh, and if you think about the internet and the way that um, trends have been over the last 10 years online, they've also been social. So you think about Facebook, you think about Twitter, you think about Pinterest, Instagram, et cetera. These are all social platforms. Uh, the concept being that you follow individuals to see what's going on in their life. Um, what you see here is a screenshot of the feed on ArtStack. Uh, so you can see individuals uh, have stacked these things, what we call stacking uh, the work. And therefore, I'm seeing those works because I'm interested in what those people like. Now, you'll also notice that each work, and this is the key, really the key difference between something like ArtStack and something like Facebook or Tumblr or Twitter, is that each work is also organized, so it's classified. And you can see the artist and how many followers that artist has. Um, now, digging deeper, which we'll do in a moment, um, you can really dive in. Uh, with some depth into what is going on with that artist and why you maybe would be interested in them. So that's just to give you kind of the background. It's social, but it's also an archive. It's also an organized database. Um, moving on, just to give you a little brief synopsis, you can see um, everybody on the, pa on the site has their own page. So they all have, everybody has uh, their own profile, which has uh, the works that interest them. It's all user-generated content, so you can either add new works using the Add Artwork feature or just stack other people's works that are already on the site. Uh, what's nice is you can then form those into collections, which a lot of curators uh, do themselves uh, in order to kind of group together elements of their stack. So be able to say, you know, this is all the work I'm interested in from the 18th century. This is all the work that is about death. This is all the work that, you know, I'm going to use in my upcoming show, things like that. Um, to give you a little background, these are uh, some of the ways that, that we um, classify work. So this is really once you start looking more in detail about how, uh, how to think about art online, things like this come in handy. So this is the page for, for Matisse. Anybody who posted, obviously Matisse isn't using ArtStack, right? But anybody who posts a work by Matisse, that work goes onto this page. This page, you can see how popular the artist is. So you get a sense of the social value of the artist. Why should you, let's pretend you didn't know who Matisse was. Knowing that he has over 4,000 followers on ArtStack would give you some indication that Matisse is probably an artist who has something going on. Um, you can then see there's 600, well, 597 artworks, which you can organize in different ways from uh, a chronological perspective, the most popular works, 
those that are um, recently added or those that you've actually stacked yourself. Uh, if you were then to dig deeper, you would be able to see the Wikipedia biography, really dig into it, see like um, works from the year he was born in, uh, works that are also labeled with the movements that he's a part of, um, and then some new features that we're adding uh, soon. This is a screenshot from my computer, so some of these things uh, at the moment you're not going to actually see online are here. Um, which are uh, ways to see upcoming exhibitions, past exhibitions, uh, group shows, solo shows. Um, if you're an artist and you're using the site, you can group works together into different, um, different series of your works. Uh, those are features that we'll be adding soon. So that's to give you a little bit of a kind of, when you think about the, the front, sort of the, the initial dive into ArtStack, you kind of have this feed and you're just sort of seeing art that's interesting to you and then you dig a little bit you scratch the surface, you get here, you scratch a little more, uh, you start to see a lot more detail. So um, here uh, you can see the artwork itself. Um, and what you'll notice here is that, so this is a work that was recently added by the Hammer Museum. Uh, you'll notice, first of all, that the artwork itself has a certain number of stacks. And one of the things that's interesting about stacks is it's a kind of different way of thinking about value for an artwork. So up until now, there's basically been the notion of art historical value, which is, is it in this book? Is it in that exhibition? Do people think that this is an important work of art? And then there's been the financial value, which is essentially, uh, how much did it sell for? And that's kind of the two notions of value that exist in the art world. And what we're trying to do, this isn't in any way a key focus of ArtStack, but one of the sort of side effects of ArtStack is also to say, hang on, do people actually like this work? So fine, it's sold for $5 million, but there's this other work that you've never heard of the artist, but for whatever reason, people like it, and it's got 70 stacks, and that has some kind of, there's something going on with the way that people engage with this work that isn't about its commercial value, that isn't about, oh, it was in the Serpentine, or it was in the Tate, or it was in you know, the Hammer Museum. Uh, it's about people actually saying, I like this. And that's very democratic, that's very open. What we do, however, is, well, I guess democratic is this word I find a little bit difficult, and I think we'll probably talk about it a bit more uh, when we start talking kind of on the panel, but we, are an open platform. I would say that we're democratic, but really what I'd say is it's meritocratic. So the notion isn't just that everybody has a voice, but of course some people's voices are heard more loudly than other people's. And that's the notion of having more followers. So if you're doing interesting things, people will hear you because you'll have more followers because people are interested in what you're saying. What we don't want to happen is obviously just to have random chaos where anybody can kind of shout and you know, then you just are inundated with all sorts of things. This kind of, what we've done is we've used that social structure in order to say, okay, let's try to make sure you're seeing interesting things. It's democratic. If you're saying interesting things, you'll have a bigger voice. If you're not, you'll be less likely to be heard. Um, just to show you kind of how these are all interlinked when you start thinking about an archive, that's the artwork detail page sort of at the top. Once you scroll down, can't really see here. You have what we call the artwork label. And this is really, it's a kind of wiki project almost, where people have added, I actually haven't looked recently, but probably something like 150,000 different labels to works. Um, that isn't the number of works that have been labeled. Those are the individual different labels that have been added. And here you can see, if you had amazing eyes, um, that the work is from 1973, that it's in an upcoming exhibition at the Hammer Museum, uh, <clears throat> what it's made out of, uh, what its dimensions are, things like this. Now, if you were to click on any one of those things, you would also see all the other works that are labeled happening. So this is the page for works from 1973, which nobody's following. But it's an interesting thing to think about. How do you, how previously would you ever have been able to see all the works from a certain year? If you were curating an exhibition or you were just merely curious what was going on in 1968, that becomes quite interesting. If you 
You can do the same thing with frame sharpness. You know, break it down by any, I want to see all the photography, I want to see all the sculpture, I want to see all the work from here or there. And then also you have the institution, and in this case, the institution is using ArtStack, uh, and you can see that's the Hammer Museum's page, all the things that they're doing, and why. So that's uh, kind of giving you a little bit of uh, detail there. Of course, it's like anything online as well as on mobile. Um, we've just released a new app. It's in English, Spanish, and Chinese. Um, and to kind of show you a bit more about this, what we wanted to do is really start the uh, site with people who are working in art, uh, who have that uh, kind of intellectual basis, see if it works for them, and grow it from there. So what we did was we started with really artists, professionals, um, curators, collectors. I'll show you kind of a small selection of the people who are using it here. Um, and then grow from there. So uh, really kind of start, again, it's that notion of meritocracy. It's democratic. Anybody can participate. But we started with a very art-specific community in order to create that kind of structure, that atmosphere when you come into the site where you understand what's going on, why, and people use it in a really professional manner while it is still a user-generated content platform. So this kind of gives you a little bit of a breakdown of kind of where we began, how we, how we started, and of course now it's spread much, much further than that. Um, and in no way should people feel intimidated by kind of uh, institutions or, or famous names but rather more that um, one of the great things, and I think, again, we'll probably talk about this in, in more detail during the, uh, the panel discussion, is the, the notion that within an archive, you don't have to be... Um, you, as, let's say, a young emerging artist or curator, don't have to feel as though you can't uh, engage on the same level as a much more famous name. So you can have your work looked at alongside Hansel Rick Obrist or uh, a, you know, a practicing emerging artist can see their work next to a Richter. And so that notion of being able to say, hang on, the art world is um, an amazing place full of incredible institutions, but also isn't it quite nice to be able to kind of sometimes break down those walls and say, if you're doing something interesting, people will also hear you. So that's kind of where we... Um, where we started with our stack and where we've got to. Um, I'm sure we'll talk more during the panel. <laughs>